In Acts chapter 9, we read of a certain woman named Tabitha, also known as Dorcas. Tabitha was her Aramaic name, while Dorcas was her Greek name. Her name literally means gazelle or deer in both languages. In the book of Song of Solomon, the deer or gazelle is a metaphor for beloved. We see in this text that this is also true of Tabitha. She was dearly beloved by everybody who knew her. Tabitha was a Jewish believer. She was living in a town named Joppa, also known as Jaffa. Joppa is located on the Mediterranean coast, about 10 or 11 miles northwest of Lydda. Tabitha was both wealthy and generous. Her many works of Christian charity and love had endeared her to many friends and neighbors. We read that Tabitha became sick and died. Her friends and family prepared her body for burial, washing her body and laying her in an upper room. The disciples in Joppa had learned that Peter was staying nearby in Lydda, which was only about 10 miles to the south. Remember that Peter had come to Lydda, where he had prayed in the name of Jesus for a man named Aeneas, who was paralyzed. Aeneas had been instantly healed, and this miracle had been reported throughout the area, causing many people to believe in Jesus. The believers in Joppa sent word to Peter in Lydda, urging him to quickly come to Joppa. Peter came at once, and many of Tabitha's friends stood nearby weeping and showing Peter all of the tunics and garments that Tabitha used to make while she was alive. Peter made everybody go out of the room. Now this is reminiscent of the time when Jesus prayed for Jairus' 12-year-old daughter who had died. In that case, the people also had stood by weeping, but Jesus had told them, don't weep, she's not dead but only sleeping. And the people who had been weeping laughed Jesus to scorn because they knew that the little girl had died. It's ironic that the same people who were weeping and grieving moments earlier were now laughing and mocking Jesus just moments later. And so Jesus put all of them out of the room, and he only allowed Peter, James, and John to accompany him. Jesus took the little girl by the hand, and he said, Little girl, arise. And we read that the young girl was instantly brought back to life, and she sat up. The parents were astonished, but Jesus told them not to tell anybody what had happened. Now here in the book of Acts, Peter does something very similar. The people are weeping at the death of Tabitha, but Peter makes them all leave the room. Then we read that he kneels down next to her body and he says, Tabitha, arise. She opened her eyes and she saw Peter and she sat up. Peter took her by the hand, lifted her up, and presented her alive to the believers. This miracle became widely known throughout all the region, and through it, many people believed in Jesus Christ. After this, we read that Peter stayed for a long time in Joppa. He stayed at the house of a man named Simon, a tanner by trade. This is the first resurrection performed in the name of Jesus that we read about in the book of Acts. We see through this notable miracle several things. First, we see the resurrection of Tabitha caused many people to believe the gospel message and turn to Jesus. Peter was one of Jesus' twelve disciples. His testimony concerning the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ was strongly substantiated through this miracle. So, Peter was not merely an eyewitness to Jesus' resurrection. He was one who had been commissioned by the Lord Jesus to do the same types of miracles and works that Jesus had done. Peter was acting as Christ's representative. This is the purpose of Christ's miracles. First, they express the compassionate heart of God. But secondly, and more importantly, they are a confirming, miraculous witness to the truth claims of the gospel message. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works will he do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is the goal and the purpose of Christ's miracles, to glorify God the Father through the revelation of Jesus Christ, His Son. Let's believe God for Christ's miracles to be manifest in and through our lives so that Jesus may be glorified as the Son of God and so that people may believe in Him and inherit the gift of eternal life through faith in Jesus.